Historically, we know our friends, our mothers, our sisters, our aunts, they're failing these diets, right? Why is that? Well, we know why that is now. We know what the body does and what the body comes up with to stop you from doing that. When you abruptly say on January 1st, cut your calories and start exercising, the body says, whoa, we're starving here, right? That, the body perceives that as a starvation event and the body wants to survive. So then it presents you with these obstacles. It produces hunger hormone and then you have hunger hormones circulating all throughout your system, making you seek food, right? So that you survive. The nervous system sends hunger and food seeking signals to your brain. So you seek food. So the answer to the question is, let's address those things. There are ways to address that overwhelming hunger. There are ways to address that slowing metabolism. And we stop those things and we get around those obstacles and then we have a new result. Instead of the historical, I'm gonna cut my calories and exercise and somehow white knuckle through this. That never works. We all know that doesn't work. It's very similar to going underwater and saying, I'm going to stay underwater. You're gonna stay underwater for a while using your white knuckle willpower but the body wants to survive and eventually will overcome you with those survival-based signals so that you burst up and get the oxygen you need to survive. What this is about is getting past a critical point in your effort to lose weight, after which it's no longer miserable, right? In the beginning, if you're 250 pounds and 5'5", five five and you embark on a calorie restriction, clean eating, exercise, diet, it's terrible. It's terrible. On the other hand, if, you, if you've been lean your entire life and you go out and exercise and eat clean, it's not so bad because your body isn't sending all these overwhelming starvation signals and, and telling you to seek food. But when an overweight person starts on day one, the fateful day one, it's miserable and it's terrible. So this isn't so much about creating new and good habits. This is about creating change in our body so that we can get past a certain point after which we feel exactly like these people that we see as we drive down and we see this person on their way to yoga, drinking a kale shake, who's smiling and seemingly not miserable. That's where we want to be. We want to induce enough change in our body by paying attention to biofeedback and paying attention to recovery so that we get past that critical point. And now it's fun and easy for us as well, instead of this non-sustainable struggle that we're so familiar with historically. So a very specific example of what we can do, and there are many more, is we can integrate this no restart principle, right? And what I mean by the no restart principle is when that day comes, uh, that you're not able to stick to the program specifically and you end up eating something or you end up missing a workout, that doesn't mean I'm off my diet and it's over and I'm coming back in a month. What that means is that we take that day off and maybe the next day off and then we allow the program to calibrate around us. We allow it to move with us through life because each one of us is an individual and each one of us has external stressors that are different. So we can't follow this unchangeable program. And instead of quitting, we integrate the no restart principle and we take breaks when our body tells us we need breaks. And then we come right back in where we left off so that eventually we get to the end, even if it's 90 days to finish a 30 day program, because now we've made progress. We've made progress. 